Nicola Sturgeon promises a second independence referendum. Scotland can, however, afford to get it alone less than ever. The Scottish ruling party SNP wants to hold a second independence referendum if it wins the regional elections next May. The announcement by what we would call Prime Minister Nicola Sturgeon, I know she's called First Minister, this week came as a little surprise. After all, the separation from its large neighbour England is the main goal of the separatists. The polls give the SNP hope that it could win the referendum this time. For the first time, pollsters see the independence camp slightly in head over a longer period of time. Brexit, which is unpopular with the Scots, and the even less popular Prime Minister Boris Johnson, so the theory goes, could make the decisive difference on a second attempt. In addition, Johnson is looking bad as a crisis manager in the corona pandemic compared to Sturgeon. The SNP remains popular even after 13 years in power and an absolute majority is expected again in the election. And yet, and I know with this I really disappoint some of my very loyal viewers, but it is doubtful that independence would work this time. Because economically it would be even more problematic than in the first referendum six years ago. Even then, the economic argument had been the decisive factor in staying in the kingdom. There is much to suggest that it would pull again. First, the oil industry, which was supposed to ensure prosperity for independent Scotland, has been hit hard by the low price of oil and may never recover. The S&P dream of becoming a second Norway has thus been shattered. Second, Brexit will be much tougher than originally expected in Scotland. That would mean a hard border across the British Isles and exchanges with Britain's most important trading partner would be considerably impeded. Three-fifths of Scottish exports go to England, only one-fifth to the EU. The symbiotic relationship in the financial sector between Edinburgh and London would also be severed. Thirdly, the explosive question of the currency remains. Since the euro is just as unpopular in Scotland as it is in England, the SNP wants to keep the pound, making it dependent on the Bank of England. In 2014, voters did not have this surrender to reality. Now, the 2016 Brexit vote has shown that nationalist emotions are sometimes stronger than economic reason. In the case of Scotland, however, there is also the fact that, in spite of all the demarcation from England, the British identity is still more pronounced than the European ever was. Johnson could therefore risk allowing the SNP to hold the independence referendum. As in 2014, the voters do the rest. But I have to emphasize two things. First of all, if Scotland would become independent, they would be welcome to join the EU. I'm absolutely sure about this. And Spain made absolutely clear they won't veto that because many Brexiteers always bring that up. Second, of course, Scotland would not be one of the economically strongest members of the EU, but that never mattered. A lot of other things in the 32 protocols in the application process matter. And second, I must say, in this case, the euro will be unavoidable. It is part of joining now to join the euro as well. So as soon as you reach the qualification criteria for the euro, every new member will have to introduce the euro. So there won't be a choice there that everyone has to keep in mind. But I'm living with the euro for quite some time now and I'm quite happy with it because it's so convenient as well and it is a strong currency. Nobody can doubt that. And if you now want to know more about European politics, YouTube has chosen another of my videos right here for you in the end screen, right next to your chance to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Click and enjoy. Viel Spaß!